Quotes from, John Calvin. From the Kindle, Deep Christian Quotes and Bible Verses. First quote. All men of sound judgment will therefore hold, that a sense of deity is indelibly engraven on the human heart. And that this belief is naturally engendered in all, and thoroughly fixed as it were in our very bones, is strikingly attested by the contumacy of the wicked, who, though they struggle furiously, are unable to extricate themselves from the fear of God. Second quote. As a just punishment of the wicked, after they have closed their own eyes, God makes their hearts dull and heavy, and hence, seeing, they see not. Third quote. Those, therefore, who set up a fictitious worship, merely worship and adore their own delirious fancies, indeed, they would never dare so to trifle with God, had they not previously fashioned him after their own childish conceits. Hence that vague and wandering opinion of deity is declared by an apostle to be ignorance of God. Fourth quote. No religion is genuine that is not in accordance with truth. Fifth quote. At length they bewilder themselves in such a maze of error, that the darkness of ignorance obscures, and ultimately extinguishes, those sparks which were designed to show them the glory of God. Still, however, the conviction that there is some deity continues to exist, like a plant which can never be completely eradicated. Though so corrupt, that it is only capable of producing the worst of fruit. Sixth quote. Those who rejecting scripture, imagine that they have some peculiar way of penetrating to God, are to be deemed not so much under the influence of error as madness. Seventh quote. Hence it is easy to understand that we must give diligent heed both to the reading and hearing of scripture, if we would obtain any benefit from the Spirit of God. Eighth quote. Conscience, which distinguishing, between good and evil, responds to the judgment of God, is an undoubted sign of an immortal spirit. How could motion devoid of essence penetrate to the judgment seat of God, and under a sense of guilt strike itself with terror? The body cannot be affected by any fear of spiritual punishment. Ninth quote. Again, when Paul exhorts believers to cleanse themselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, he shows that there are two parts in which the taint of sin resides. Peter also, in calling Christ the shepherd and bishop of souls, would have spoken absurdly if there were no souls towards which he might discharge such an office. Nor would there be any ground for what he says concerning the eternal salvation of souls, or for his injunction to purify our souls, or for his assertion that fleshly lusts swore against the soul. Neither could the author of the epistle to the Hebrews say, that pastors watch as those who must give an account for our souls, if souls were devoid of essence. Tenth quote. Paul calls God to witness upon his soul, which could not be brought to trial before God if incapable of suffering punishment. This is still more clearly expressed by our Savior, when he bids us fear him who, after he has killed the body, is able also to cast into hell fire. Eleventh quote. The author of the epistle to the Hebrews distinguishes the fathers of our flesh from God, who alone is the father of our spirits. He could not have asserted the essence of the soul in clearer terms. Moreover, did not the soul, when freed from the fetters of the body, continue to exist, our Savior would not have represented the soul of Lazarus as enjoying blessedness in Abraham's bosom, while, on the contrary, that of Dives was suffering dreadful torments. Twelfth quote. When it is said, then, that the will of the natural man is subject to the power of the devil, and is actuated by him. The meaning is not that the wills while reluctant and resisting, is forced to submit. As masters oblige unwilling slaves to execute their orders. But that, fascinated by the impostures of Satan, it necessarily yields to his guidance, and does him homage. Thirteenth quote. Even Satan when he is the instrument of divine wrath, is completely under the command of God who turns him as he will, in the execution of his just judgments. Thanks.